Hi, Misha here. And this is our second, I don't know, episode or whatever you like to call it, where I show off a diecast model and a firearm that would have been issued to the pilot or crew member of the real world aircraft. In the first episode, we looked at a MiG and a Makarov, and this time we're going to look at a UH-1 Iroquois, or it says it's much better known, Huey. And a Smith & Wesson. Victory model revolver. Now, and I just did that. See, that's what happens, guys. <laughs> Too many sticky-outty things, but luckily those are relatively durable. On-camera demonstration. The Huey began life in 1952. And it first started to get out into the field in 56. And originally it was known as the HU1, which is where the name Huey kind of comes from. But then in 62, it was re-designated as the UH-1, which is a common nomenclature for rotary bladed craft. And like I said, officially it was the Iroquois. And this is of course very famous for its use in Vietnam. It first went over there in 62 and uh, served in so many roles. It was a, a gunship, it was fitted with rockets, it was a medical transport, personnel transport, all kinds of variations and of course there are many different configurations over time. And they would make over 16,000 of these. I guess you would consider this model here a slick because it doesn't have all the armament. Well, the Air Force wasn't real keen on its pilots carrying automatic pistols for a few different reasons, but the Air Force actually kept using revolvers all the way up till the adoption of the M9 Beretta in 1985. And to some extent, all 38 double action revolvers are the same, be they from Colt, Smith & Wesson, or other. Well, they all kind of do the same job. The Victory model here was manufactured in World War II for use by the Allies. And it was essentially a simplified, militarized version of the company's military and police. Chambered for 38 Special, or 38 Smith & Wesson for the Commonwealth, the British. It was a double or single action revolver. Fixed sights, as you saw, cylinder swings out. Six shot, lanyard loop, simple wood grips appeared in 42. Early ones would have had a blued finish, but most of these would have a phosphate finish. And while they quit making victory models in 1945, the military would hang on to them for years, decades to come, especially the Air Force. They were still issuing victories like this in the 60s. 
to pilots and air crews. Many would have a phosphated finish, either original from the factory or added during a military refurbishment. They would also purchase some newer Smith & Wesson Model 10s and Model 15s, which they just called the M15. But plenty of these old victories were still carried into combat by the pilots of Hueys. This model here is a 148 scale. Now typically I do 172 scale. That's kind of my standard. But I really wanted a Huey, so I kind of broke my rule once. And the thing about a helicopter is they're relatively small compared to aircraft. So if you do a 172 scale helicopter, they're, they're, not, they're not great. They're not big. I mean, they're, you know, it's a thing. It is die cast metal. Even the skids are metal on this one. Your propellers and tenai are plastic. And this is made by Air Force One. I wouldn't rate them as the top tier of uh, model makers, but they're definitely not bottom barrel either. They tend to make maybe somewhat simple, but also quite durable die cast models and they do tend to use a lot of metal some manufacturers use more plastic polymer but uh, Air Force One does tend to go heavy with the metal their airplanes can be displayed with gear up or down but they usually do not have removable figures that come with them so yeah the Huey from Vietnam. Very, very iconic helicopter. Perhaps the most iconic helicopter ever made. And the Smith & Wesson double action revolver. I mean, again, really from the last generation of revolvers that were made for true combat martial use. After this, automatics really took over. So it was kind of the last of its breed. These are also really relatively inexpensive compared to other World War II handguns. You know, look at a World War II 1911, for example. So if you're wanting a sidearm from that period you can definitely check out one of these and they're a lot of fun to shoot and they will shoot you know a very common cartridge well if you'd like to know more about the history of either of these you can check out my personal channel over at Misha for model reviews and histories of aircraft or we have an entire playlist for firearms histories and reviews so right here on this channel any questions or comments please do post them below. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. And also, if you get time, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Nisha, and we'll catch you very soon next time.